to Chris Hadfield now. He joins us live from King's Cross in central London. Hello to you, Chris. Thanks for joining us here on Sky News this afternoon. Sensational photographs in the book that you are just launching. Um, what's it like being in space? You know, that clip you just showed, Kay, where something as simple and predictable as just wringing out a cloth that everybody knows how that's going to be, as soon as you get yourself to kind of a brand new environment, suddenly something completely surprising happens. And, and I think 13 or 14 million people have watched that little clip because they were surprised when we push ourselves right to the very limit. And living on board a spaceship, living in space off the planet is constantly like that with the way things behave on the inside, but uh, as is in the book, the way the world truly looks from the outside, it's, it's constantly mesmerizing. You're the first Canadian to ever walk in space. How did that feel? You know, we don't go outside lightly. It's not, it's not like in the movies. We only go outside on a spacewalk for a really specific purpose, because it's dangerous. But when it happens, it's like every astronaut's dream. It is, you are alone in the universe. You're, you're in between the world and everything else. And, and the world is, is slowly, silently, majestically turning next to you. And you're holding on to everything, holding on to your one link with humanity with one hand. The, the perspective on kind of where we are in history just slaps you in the face. And seeing the whole world in sort of an honesty of how it truly is, it's, it's, uh, it's something I dreamed about since I was a little boy, but it's even better than that when you have a chance to do it for real. You're, it's certainly a long way from that farm in Ontario, isn't it? Uh, you were inspired, I believe, by the moon landing. I was inspired. Uh, I was first inspired by science fiction books and, and movies, but I was even more inspired by the first people who were actually going to space with Yuri Gagarin and, and uh, Al Shepard and John Glenn. But then when the first two of us walked on the moon, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon, to me it was just manifestation of the fact that, that impossible things can happen in my lifetime. And it really inspired me to change who I was and, and to pursue those things. And amazingly enough, to fly in space three different times and eventually command the, uh, the International Space Station. Yeah, exactly. So what was, how, how difficult, how, how much of a challenge is it to be part of the International Space Station, not least being commander and being responsible for everyone else's health and safety while you're there? How is everyday living while you're there? Uh, well, the stakes are extremely high, Kay. If you make a mistake, everybody dies and you destroy the world spaceship. So, so the, the stakes are extremely high and there's no one really to help you. The, the six of us on board are separate from Earth. The best Earth can do is sort of give us advice. So it's, uh, it's an immense task to try and do it properly. And we, we take it really seriously. I trained as an astronaut for 21 years. I learned to speak Russian, to fly a Russian spaceship, and, and uh, built a team of people that I thought could handle no matter what happened. And all sorts of stuff happened, but uh, we were successful. But it's also just such a magnificent human experience, uh, a personal experience, and that's what I did my very best to share with everyone. Well, looking at you brushing your teeth as we're chatting to you, were you ever frightened? Uh, you try not to have an astronaut who's afraid. No one wants a, a frightened astronaut. It, that means you didn't get ready. It means, it means you weren't prepared for what was going to happen, which you really never try and get yourself into. You don't want to be relying on your instinct to fly a spaceship. So that's why we spend so much of our lives, so many years preparing just for that. Um, so once in a while, you get a little shiver of fear up your back when something truly random happens. Like if you see uh, a meteorite burn up in the atmosphere beneath you, you know that that rock went by your spaceship on the way to uh, crashing into the Earth. So that reminds you of the fragility of where you are. But, but that's true no matter where you live. It, you don't have to be on a spaceship to know that we're all mortal. And, and I think the magnificence of it, the opportunity of it, and what we're learning from it, way outstrips any uh, transient fears that, that you might have to deal with. 
Looking at these uh, fantastic images uh, in your book, uh, you are here. Um, you first started um, putting these on Twitter and you were described as perhaps the most social media savvy astronaut ever to leave Earth. Were you aware while you were in space of your popularity? You know, I just took those pictures, Kay, because you can't help it. The world is so generously beautiful and it changes every time you come around and you go around 16 times a day. So I was taking the pictures regardless. But luckily, just within the last few years, we have basic Internet. So I could I could not just keep them to myself, but I could I could write something on Twitter and hit send. And, and it was delightful to become aware of the reaction, to see the hundreds of thousands and then millions of people that were, were, were along for the voyage with me and were, were really seeing Earth through my eyes, seeing Earth clearly maybe in a way they'd never seen it before. It, it was both motivating but also really heartening to be able to share it that way. The, the application of technology for better self-awareness and understanding. It, it, it's a lovely position to be in as an astronaut, but it's really nice to have been able to share it with so many folks. Now you have retired, although you did celebrate uh, one or two anniversaries in space, I believe, while you were there. Um, looking forward, how far away do you think we are from a moon colony? I don't think we're very far from a moon colony. We've been living on the space station for 15 years. Uh, just a couple weeks ago. So if you're 15 years or younger, you have never been alive when there weren't human beings living off the planet. There's never been a second. And so we've colonized the orbit of the Earth. And it's not that far to the moon. It's only three days away. You know, it's like uh, a long drive uh, across Europe. So uh, we will colonize the moon next, I'm confident. It's the obvious next destination. And just as we've slowly spread over the whole surface of the Earth, and in the last hundred years colonized down into Antarctica. I think that pattern is just using the technology, going to repeat going to the moon and then eventually even further. But, but we still have to allow ourselves to get a lot of things wrong, sort it out, not kill everybody and learn everything that comes back from it. I'm hoping to see people permanently living on the moon within my lifetime. And if you had any regrets, would it be that you never went to the moon? Oh, I don't live with regrets. I, I have been so lucky, had such a rich existence, even so far. I, I'm, I'm a very lucky man. And sure, I'd love to go to the moon, but regret is a choice. No, I, I, if I get a chance, I'll try and get ready and go. But, uh, but I am the first one to recognize just how incredibly fortunate I've been to this point, to, to have been the person that took all those pictures. You know, this, this is just a small handful of the thousands and thousands of things that I've seen in the world. I'm, I'm, I like pinch myself with, with, uh, with the luck that I've had. But if you're asking, I'd love to go to the moon, sure. Yeah, I'm just looking at the book as we're chatting to you. Such a shame you're not here so that you can sign it for me. Maybe in another lifetime. It's great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. And good luck with the book. Thank you. Thank there you very much. I'll take all the luck I can get. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.